the dune model. This is Max. Max wants to go on a road trip with his friends. To prepare himself, he has bought several travel guides. When reading, Max discovers that he has a lot of do's and don'ts to consider for traveling abroad. Yet how could he possibly memorize all these rules and regulations? Max digs deeper into the topic of culture. The concept can actually be conceived as quite multifaceted. Max is confused and overwhelmed. How can culture be explained? He is insecure and bewildered about the whole issue. Suddenly, Max notices a large sand dune and a wise old man who explains that the dune can be a model to illustrate and visualize actions and regulations of a cultural field of agency. A field of agency is a group of agents among which plausibility and normality prevail. The model has three levels, have to, should, and can. The have to level describes norms, laws, or natural environmental conditions which are strictly defined and characterized by a high degree of structure. The should level describes maxims, guidelines, and general rules of conduct which are valid long term. At the top of the dune is the can level. It describes group-specific rules and trends which are individually negotiable and have high process dynamics. The dune is characterized by constant change. Rules of the can level, which are less conventionalized, can be metaphorically blown away like wind-borne sand. Yet when they are practiced repeatedly, they might be solidified at the next lower level, just like sandy soil that is solidified through constant pressure. The further down in the dune, the more normal and plausible a regulation appears. The dune model describes normality and plausibility of rules and cultural fields of agency. A field of agency can not only be a country, but also a sports club, a factory site, a region, or an indigenous tribe. Because there are many fields of agency, there are also many different dunes. They can be interdependent or intertwined. Max is still unsure, and the wise man suggests, perhaps you'll understand better when we look at the behaviors and regulations of a familiar context. How about the world of road traffic? An established rule is crossing a traffic light when it's green, because this is anchored in the law and is therefore part of the have to level. Depending on the field of actors, there are various laws, such as the road traffic regulations or Straßenverkehrsordnung in Germany, for example. In other regions or countries, other laws or regulations apply. Yet all dunes in the context of traffic are connected by the common ideas of protecting traffic participants and securing the avoidance of harm. However, not all regulations are equally binding in all fields of agency. In Germany, for example, it is legally required to form a rescue lane when there is an accident. In other fields of agency, like in Switzerland or Slovenia, this is a should regulation. Over the course of time, a regulation can move back and forth between the levels. It can solidify or fade away. For example, in the 1930s in Germany, the speed limit on the Autobahn was lawfully prescribed as 80 kilometers per hour. In the early 70s, the speed limit was increased to 100 kilometers per hour. In 1974, a new regulation introduced 130 kilometers per hour as an advisory speed limit. Today, this is no longer a have to, but a should regulation, as the Autobahn has no set speed limit. 130 kilometers per hour is simply recommended. The can level 
describes individually negotiable rules. When moving, for example, you can set up a signboard that is asking other traffic participants not to park in the street section right in front of your house. However, this is only a request. It is not legally prescribed and does not necessarily have to be followed. Other examples within the CAM level are warning vests and reflectors in road traffic. Wearing them is voluntary in Germany, whereas in another field of agency, such as Finland, it is the law and therefore at the have-to level of the Dune model. Max is still unsure, but he tries to withstand this uncertainty and thereby acts according to a key characteristic of intercultural competence. Max now tells his friends about the Dune model and explains that culture is constantly being renegotiated and is a changing process. These negotiation processes strengthen standards and rules, or make them fade away. It is also possible for old, low elements from the dune to rise up again, making them relevant and debatable once more. Culture entails both structures and processes, and that is why it's difficult to only work with categories like do's or don'ts to prepare for engaging in a foreign culture. Instead, it is about withstanding the uncertainty of other perspectives and learning how to most appropriately engage within the unknown culture or environment. Confident and excited, Max and his friends can begin their journey.